Hey everyone, and welcome to Hemp Processing and Technology. Today, we'll be showing you how to harvest hemp pollen. So you'll first need to either have a male plant or a female hermaphrodite plant that has pollen sacs either naturally or with the use of chemicals. And as I've talked about in my seeds video, if you're using a female plant that naturally produced pollen sacs or did so due to a stressful environment, then I wouldn't necessarily recommend using the pollen from this plant since the seeds it'll produce have a high chance of becoming a hermaphrodite as well. However, if the female plant was chemically induced to produce pollen sacs, such as being sprayed with colloidal silver, then you have a much better chance of producing feminized seeds with this pollen. Now, before talking about the ways to harvest pollen, I'll go over a few characteristics of pollen sacs I've noticed in my groves that will affect how you decide to harvest it. First of all, pollen sacs on a stem, although typically appearing at the same time, will all mature independently of each other. This makes harvesting pollen a tedious process if you're doing it manually because you'll need to harvest it every day for multiple days for every single stem. Another frustrating thing about harvesting pollen, especially outdoors, is that pollen is minuscule in size, so they are very susceptible to any type of air movement. This means that to successfully harvest pollen, you'll need to do so in an area that has no wind, no slight breeze, and definitely no fans. Finally, something I've noticed when experimenting with changing light cycles on a male plant after it has produced pollen sacs in the flowering stage is that even if it goes back into the vegetative stage, whatever pollen sacs the plant has produced will keep growing to maturity. This means that, for example, if you cut off some stems with immature pollen sacs, put them in a vase, and shine a light on it for a few days, the pollen sacs will mature and open. So let's go over the manual way first. You'll need a box to catch the pollen, and here I'm using something called a keef box, which is a box normally used to store cannabis and gather the trichomes that might fall off the buds onto the bottom tray, which is detachable for easy access. I found that these are great for storing pollen because the bottom of the boxes are typically made with something flat like glass which makes getting the pollen out of the box a lot easier. And if you have one with a mesh layer on top of it, that'll prevent the pollen sacs that fall into the box accidentally from mixing in with the pollen. Here, I'm just lightly tapping on each stem so that the mature pollen sacs that are ready to open will release its pollen. Another thing I want to mention about pollen sacs is that each sac will only produce pollen once. After they matured and opened, then that's it. So if the stems, pollen sacs have all opened, then it's been completely harvested. The easier way I found of harvesting pollen is to cut off the stems when the sacs do appear on the stems, but before they fully matured. From there, place them in a vase with water and then keep the vase either in sunlight, under a grow light, or if you don't have one available, then use a compact fluorescent light. And then place it on top of something flat like glass or a large sheet of paper. From there, you just wait until the pollen sacs mature and drop the pollen onto the table surface. And each day, you can use something flat and firm like a credit card to gather all the pollen on the table to store for future use. Or if you use something like a sheet of paper, you can just fold it up and pour the pollen into a storage container. Now that you have the pollen, you'll need to keep it in a dry and cool place if you're not using it right away. While some people recommend putting rice in with the pollen to help keep the pollen dry, after trying it out, it just seems to make it much harder to access the pollen for use once it's mixed in with the rice. Instead, if you're not storing the pollen in something airtight, I recommend keeping silica gel packs with whatever you're using to store the pollen. These are the do not eat packets that come with things like beef jerky. 
that absorbs excess moisture in the air. Now just keep it somewhere cool like in the fridge and from my experience, as long as the pollen stays dry, it'll stay viable for a few months. I haven't tried to freeze it yet, but from what I've read, it could last up to a few years if stored correctly. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch. Available at Amazon in print and digital with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.